Welcome, Texas Gunsmith back. Today we have part two of our South Bend lathe, <clears throat> uh, the South Bend lathe number 2H. It's a turret lathe. And finally, we're going to get started on tearing this beast down. Uh, before we begin, I figured I'd tell you a little bit about it. The uh, number 2H's are a turret lathe, which uh, that has to do with the tailstock end. You can see we have this extra apron uh, on the tailstock, and the tailstock is somewhat different. The turret lathes were more designed for production, uh, high production, in that you could put different attachments in each of these holes, uh, and there's six holes on it. And as you work, <clears throat> as you work this uh, mechanism back here on the apron, you can rotate. The different attachments to to go at a, a reasonably fast pace uh, and the reason it's called a turret lead if you look at it well kind of looks like a tank or a battleship turret uh, i was a really originally looking for a tool room lathe which is a little bit simpler in design it would have the your apron here but it would have a uh, a compound mounted on on this section here and it's a little bit of a simpler design. Uh, in fact, I got a picture here I'll show you. This would be the tool room lathe version of the same lathe. This is also a 16 inch, but you can see the tail stock is somewhat simpler and there's no apron on the rear. Uh, a really nice lathe. I, I wasn't necessarily looking for a 16 inch. I was looking for a South Bend lathe and I wanted an old one uh, to restore, and you know I just like it. Uh, but as as things turned out, I ended up with the turret lathe. You know I happened to find this, and I liked the year. And then in researching turret lathes more, I thought, well, it's more features. It adds uh, some extra complicated mach machinery, but if it's up and working right. And we get the different attachments for the turret. Uh, th this could be quite interesting. <clears throat> so we figure we give it a shot and see how things go. Uh, and that's pretty much where we're at with that. So far, I have found some extra parts. We were missing this door here, and this panel. This panel mounts is, mounts up under there. We're still missing one. Uh, for this side, so we're hoping we can find that somewhere. I found these two panels on eBay Funny story my wife saw this and she said what goes there you got to work you got to burn wood to make this thing run Yeah burn wood At any rate, uh, we're gonna get started on tearing down the, I think the first thing we're gonna do is work on getting the turret down and this apron down and uh, after those things, we'll work on tearing down the machine. But I think in this video, it's going to be primarily getting the, the turret and this apron down. So we'll be back in a moment. One thing I should mention is I did manage to pick up three different books. Uh, two of them I printed offline. One from WSWells.com. Uh, one from VintageMachinery.org. And this one I bought off of eBay. All right, they're basically parts books, but they also can have some service information too and some procedures and tearing the machine down. It's not, it's not full on the service end, but it does have some things. This book here is based on the tool room version, but there are some things that are relevant. This book here was published in 1958. This one was published in 1965 and we can see the uh, the booklet number CE 3458 alright so 1965 and we come to this book published in December of 1995 but it has the same booklet number on it uh, looking at the two books briefly I do see some differences and I plan on uh, cross-referencing anything that I may need or may want to do between the three books just to see what 
variations may be in part numbers or other things in case I'm looking for parts. So I figured I'd pass that along. All right, for us, what I think we're going to do first is we're going to work on getting the turret itself off and then getting the center section out here. So we're going to start working on that and see how we see how we do. One thing I can tell you, everything on this machine is heavy, including the machine itself. They got the uh, shipping weight listed as something like 2,800 pounds. So even you and four of your friends ain't moving this. You're going to need a crane, a cherry picker, or, or like really strong dudes. You know, back then in the 40s, 50s, and 60s, everything was badass cast iron and heavy. And this is no exception. So even bringing this thing into the, into the shop here was, uh, it, it, it was an adventure. At any rate, to, to get this off, we're going to be using a cherry picker to lift it up because it's quite heavy. So what we had to do is we had to pull all the bolts out of these rails here. Now with the bolts out, these will slide out of the way. And then we come here and get the other one out. And then we should be able to lift off. All right, you can see we got it up some. <clears throat> We're getting ready to roll it out of the way. One thing you want to pay attention to is we do have some blocks in here and shims. Uh, we can see these, uh, these spacers in here are tapered as well as the rails for this. So we're gonna go in one way and you have it on both sides, uh, the shims and spacers on both sides. I would keep them marked and separated so they go back onto the same way. Uh, you know, due to the age and wear on the machine, we may have to do some different shimming. Uh, we'll check it, check that out. But you know, I would definitely keep stuff separated so you know which which way it went on. All right, we got it up and hanging. We can get a look at the bottom side here. If we come over and take a quick peek in here. Great. All right, we got this up on a bench. Uh, we're going to be working on stripping this down, lightening it up. So we can clean lube, look at all the parts and so on and get it finished up. Uh, we'll, we'll start taking off easy stuff just to reduce the weight first. We'll probably start with all the, the all thread stops here. You notice there's six of them uh, to go with the six turrets. So these, uh, these will work for stops. You know, if you're using the, the tail stock end to cut into your material or whatever. So we'll start with that. And we'll start working on getting the uh, the turret head off. All right, we got our all threads out. We're going to work on uh, seeing what we can do about getting this turret off. First is uh, get this handle undone. With the handle off, this will lift off. There's a keyway on this to the shaft. I already pulled the keyway off and saved it. All right, we pulled our two attachments out of the turret also. Uh, this has some play if we start lifting it up, but it feels like we're held by uh, something underneath, so we're going to roll it over and have a look. Looking at the bottom side, <clears throat> it looks like there's a pinion gear of some type, something like you might find in the differential on the bottom side. I'm not sure if that's what it's holding us or not, but I suspect that... Uh, this nut here is holding the bottom shaft. There's a, a an Allen set screw holding that nut onto the shaft. So we're gonna remove those and see if we can lift the turret off. All right, no luck so far. I wasn't able to get the turret off yet. What I did is I got these out of the top uh, to lighten it up. 
I did get the nut off the bottom, but it's not sliding up yet. I don't know if it's on a taper or just stuck or what. The valve here, the, the piston which, lock, which locks the turret head up in here was stuck. I pulled this spring out, I managed to get it freed up. So now we can rotate. What I'm gonna do is I wanna get this shaft out. And uh, your all threads need to be timed with the turret head. Uh, so what I did is I, I put marks and I'm probably gonna use a hammer and a punch and hit the same places with the yellow paint. Uh, you're gonna want it timed up right so that your uh, all threads, you know, are in the right place when the, the turret head locks in. Well, I finally got the turret head off uh, and it's heavy. By itself, it probably weighs, I don't know, 50, 60 pounds. And I'm guessing this section here is uh, 100 to 120 pounds. Uh, it wasn't corroded on exactly. The bottom face uh, looks like uh, it was lacking lube for a while, but uh, I tried knocking this shaft up from the bottom when it was all together and it wouldn't go, but once I got the head off, the shaft falls right out. Now, inside the turret head, it was on a taper, so I don't know if I was stuck on the taper or what. But it just fell out once I got the turret head up. And the bore uh, on, the, on this part of the turret head into the bore of here was really tight. So maybe between needing to align this bore and the shaft coming down into the here, it, it was just a, a real bear getting it up. But we got it apart and we're going to get everything cleaned up. And I think as I go, I'm probably going to be changing plans. Uh, my initial plan was to strip this whole, this whole assembly here. I still may do that, but I'm undecided uh, because of the lead screw. You know, I don't know if I, I I'm kind of figuring this out as I go along. So I don't know if I got to rip down both aprons and the quick gear change box to get it out or if, if I got other ways to work around that. Uh, what I think I'm going to do is build each component clean, build it so I don't end up with a million parts and lose track of what I'm doing or lose parts. I think uh, as I get each little section tore down, I'm going to get it cleaned up, built, do whatever I got to do, and then uh, get it painted, cleaned up, and boxed up, and then move on to the next section. And then as I get eat all the sections done, put it all together. So far, I got a few things cleaned up, and uh, but I think we're going to go ahead and get this the rest of the way apart. The only thing I got left is uh, this piston, which I got freed up, and the lever in here. I'm going to get those out. There's a, like a screw or something in there that's going to be holding that lever in, and I'll get the rest of this out and work on getting it cleaned up and painted and get the make sure the oil holes are free I noticed the oil hole on this um, if we come through to the top side has a, a screw that looks like it ain't been out since uh, the machine was built I don't know but uh, <clears throat> we'll we'll get that out make sure the holes are free and all the parts cleaned up prepped and ready to go and we'll move on to the next section so that'll be it for this session. Thanks for watching. Texas Gunsmith out.